factorizing by grouping in pairs. So sometimes we can have four terms in an expression, and if we have four terms, the best way to factorize it is by grouping in pairs. So let's have a look at how we can do that. Let's look at x squared plus 5x minus 2x minus 10. Obviously, I probably could add these two terms together and then just factorize with normal monic quadratic, which we looked at in the previous video, but let's have a go factorizing by grouping in pairs. So what that involves is splitting up our, our terms into two and just looking for common factors in each one. So common factors, sorry, looking for common factors in pairs. So out of x squared and 5x, we can take x out, and that'll leave us with x plus 5. Then in minus 2x and minus 10, I can take out minus 2. And that'll leave us with x plus 5. Now, we end up with two terms, this one and this one. And now there's a common factor with those two terms. x plus 5 is common in both, so we're going to pull that out as a common factor. So we pull out x plus 5 out of the first term, and hopefully you can see, if we pull out x plus 5, we're just left with x. Then if we pull x plus 5 out of this term, we're just left with the minus 2. And now we've factorised that by the method of grouping in pairs. Just tidy it up by giving the other one a rounded bracket. Let's look at another example x squared minus x plus xy minus y. So this one we can't actually simplify at the start like we could have with this one. So there's no like terms here, so we have no choice but to try and factorize by grouping in pairs. So let's try separating these pairs from each other and looking for common factors. So a common factor with the first two is x. We pull x out of x squared, we're left with x, and taking x out of minus x, we have minus 1. Then in the next one, we can take, looks like we can take y out, because y is in both terms, and we're left with x, we take y out of minus y, we're left with minus 1. And again, this is really good, because we're left with a common factor of x minus 1. So let's pull that out as a common factor. And if we do that, in the first term, we're just left with x, and in the second term, we're left with the y. So pulling out the x minus 1, we're left with this x over here, and pulling out the x minus 1 out of this term, we're left with the y over here. Let's look at maybe a couple more. x squared minus 3x plus ax minus 3a. So again, sometimes you have to rearrange them, but this one looks like I'll be able to do it here. So let's pull out a common factor of x squared and minus 3x. Well, that's just going to be x. It's going to leave us with x minus 3. And over with the second two terms, we can pull out a factor of a to leave us with x minus 3. That's exactly what we want. We're trying to leave behind a set of brackets that's the same, so we can then pull out them as a common factor on our next line. So x minus 3 is now the common factor. And if we pull x minus 3 out of this first term, we're just left with the x. And if we pull x minus 3 out of the second term, we're just left with the positive a. Now that's factorized. All right, one more. 3x squared minus 6ax minus 7x plus 14a. So let's split them up and just look at factors in pairs. So in the first term, we can actually pull out 3x. 
that'll leave behind x in that first term. And minus, well, we pull 3 out of 6, we're left with 2. We pull the x out, but we're left with the a. In the second term, we can pull out, we actually want to pull out minus 7. And I know that because it'll leave behind a positive x, which is what we want. And if we pull out minus 7 out of here, it'll leave behind a minus 2. So sometimes you've got to look ahead a little bit and see if you need to pull out the negative or not. So here I do want to pull out the negative because it just leaves behind a positive x. And pulling negative 7 out of positive 14 leaves behind a negative 2a because the negative 7 times the negative 2 gets us back to a positive 14. And it also makes sure that we have the same bracket there, which we can now pull out as a common factor, x minus 2a, and it leaves behind so if you pull out x minus 2a here, it leaves behind the 3x. And if we pull the x minus 2a out of the second term, it leaves behind the minus 7. And now that's fully factorized.